You're watching NTC News, DeKalb County's only television news source on the campus of Northern Illinois University and from the Northern Television Center. This is NTC News Tonight. DeKalb wants to reduce neighborhood crime and make residents feel safe. And that's what, where a change in parking rules come in. Good evening, I'm Carolyn Budvillis. Thanks for joining us. And I'm Lauren Baker. If you live in the Echo Park neighborhood, you will soon see big changes on the street parking. NTC reporter Nicole Schoenenberger tells us why these new parking restrictions will see positive results. Living in the townhouses near Echo Park is Shauna Rowe's favorite area to live in DeKalb. The only problem she has is the on-street parking restrictions. But since a recent city council meeting, she doesn't have to worry much longer. The city council approved some updated parking restrictions that will not only benefit overnight guest stays, but also the safety of the people who live there. The restrictions are very similar to the ones on the west side of Annie Glidden. Because of the service calls on that side for the police department were reduced by over a third. And if we see a similar situation on this side, that obviously lowers the cost of police operations and just uh, makes everybody feel safer on this side of the street too. Restrictions made on the west side have produced very positive results. The new restrictions being made in the Echo Park area are being changed so that the visibility can be increased in the streets to reduce crime and mass gatherings. The city council wants residents to feel safer traveling on foot. Um, I like it because when I walk home from the bar I can feel safe in my own neighborhood. The parking is being changed to all north and south sides of the streets and cul-de-sacs are no parking at any time. And all the south and west sides are unrestricted parking. The only snow route will be Varsity Boulevard. The changes are coming after the concerns from residents and property managers. I'm excited because when I have guests, I don't have to pick them up in the parking garage. They can just park on the street. These changes have been a work in progress since the fall, and now since the City Council meeting on February 10th, they have been approved. Nicole Schoenberger, NTC News. Thanks, Nicole. A DeKalb firefighter is in the hospital after a house fire. The DeKalb Fire Department responded to a house fire on Harvey Street in DeKalb early Tuesday morning. The fire caused $15,000 in damages. The police are still investigating the cause of the fire. The injured firefighter suffered non-life-threatening injuries after slipping on ice outside the building. There is no further update on his status at this time. The Toyota dealership on Sycamore Road needs renovations, and they want the city to help pay for it. Toyota is insisting car dealer Brian Bemis spend more than $2 million to expand the facility. And Bemis wants the city of DeKalb to pay for almost $700,000 of it in the form of what's called a forgivable loan, which Bemis wouldn't necessarily have to pay back. DeKalb City Council talked about it last week. They want more information before they, begin, they agree to anything. Sycamore residents are not happy about a proposed sober house in their town. DeKalb County officials want to convert this property on East State Street into a sober living home. The home will be used for male drug addicts and alcoholics in the drug and DUA court program. The county will need to pay $150,000 for the house and the tenants will pay to live there. Leaders of the Sycamore want the county to, want the county to look elsewhere, preferably on property it already owns. The mayor of Genoa wants to get an Amtrak stop in his city. Mayor Mark Bikery is asking Governor Rauner to change plans bypassing Amtrak stops in Genoa and Freeport. DeKalb County is the only county with a state school that does not have a rail service. If Amtrak comes through Genoa, it could help the county and local businesses. Genoa Public Library officials are hosting a farewell party for itself next week. The library is moving away, but not far away. They're leaving the building they've owned for the past 36 years and moving a few doors down the street. If you're, an, if you're an NIU student, you may soon see changes to the printing plan as the university considers cutting out all free printing. Students are given $7 a semester in printing, which is a 50% drop from last year. Before fall 2012, students had unlimited free printing. The SSA Senate put out an online survey asking how frequently students use campus printing. The survey showed students print out at least 20 sheets a week. The survey also asked students if they would be interested to opt in or opt out of this new prepaid printing plan. They say timing is everything. If you've been watching the price at the gas pump, you've been seeing how the cost has been dropping. 
Well, even so, the Sheriff's Department has decided to go ahead with a move to convert some of its vehicles to propane. NTC reporter Emily Neely tells us the sheriff says it's still the right thing to do. With the drop in gas prices, people are racing to the pumps, but the DeKalb County Sheriff's Office is filling up their trucks with propane. This is one of the six squad cars the DeKalb County Sheriff's Office converted to run on propane. These gas prices suggest they may have converted the trucks at just the wrong time. Some people suggest otherwise. They, they don't bother us a whole lot. Um, we're still saving money even though the prices are down. We all know that they're going to go back up. If gas prices stay where they are now, each truck powered by propane will save around $2,000 a year in fuel costs. The conversion lets officers switch from gasoline to propane by pressing this button. Uh, the cost of the conversions after our rebate was $4,000. They were $8,000, but through the EPA they have a, a rebate program which is up to 80% of the cost of the conversion to a maximum of $4,000, so we got the $4,000 back. To convert the truck, they updated the fuel injection system to accept propane and gasoline fuels. They also moved their spare tires to make room for propane tanks, but one officer feels nothing has changed. It, it doesn't sound any different, it doesn't run any different, it accelerates just the same as it would on gasoline. If the program accelerates as they expect, the DeKalb County Sheriff's Office might convert more squad cars to run on propane. In Sycamore, Emily Neely, NTC News. The DeKalb County Sheriff's Office will decide if they will convert the rest of their trucks after an evaluation next year. Let's find out whether those trucks are going to need their heater, heaters on. Brittany Morello is here to tell us how cold it's going to be the rest of the week. Well, we're in the midst of the cold right now. I know that doesn't make it any better, but let's look at those temperatures that we're going to see in our area for tomorrow. We're going to see single digits. Yes, absolutely single digits with the wind chill making it feel like negative 25 degrees in some areas. It's going to be very cold, windy towards the lake. And for more information on our record-breaking cold, stay with us. So they say it's a man's world? I don't see anybody's name on it. While they were doing their thing, Today, women can do anything men can do. And there's one thing we're even better at. Welcome back and welcome to the Arctic. Yes, today was so cold if you were walking outside. Those wind chills hitting your face probably made it so numb, wishing that you were in this 53 degree weather back in 2013, but you're not. We're in different record weather. Today, we're gonna see a low of about nine degrees, negative nine, I'm so sorry, negative nine, which is gonna beat that negative eight that we saw back in 2006. So yes, you're gonna be there for that. Now, we have a wind chill advisory all over our area in effect. As you can see, we're gonna have it all over Illinois. It's gonna go all the way down into Florida by noon on Thursday. And we call this the Siberian Express in meteorology terms. What that means is this air is coming from Russia across the North Pole and making its way all the way down to Lucky Us in Illinois right there. Not only do we have the cold pushing its way right here, we also have the snow filtering around tonight as well. Now, Thursday, as that cold front deepens and widens, we're going to have a high pressure system move closer to us, giving us those clear skies. But what that's going to do is release the heat that the sun is giving us. It's going to be even colder, so we don't want clear skies in winter at all. Now, as we move on to Friday, um, we're going to see even another system start to form right in front of this front. So we have some snow pushing towards us, so we might see some snow this week on Friday and Saturday. Now, let's narrow it down back to tonight. We're going to see partly cloudy skies. Those gusts are going to be about 20 miles per hour. We're going to see that blowing snow, those crazy wind chill temperatures of about negative 25 degrees. It's going to be cold out there, so if you must go out, if you take your car, bring a blanket, cover your face, because you can get frostbite in a matter of minutes. Now Thursday, it's going to be very sunny, very cold, and we're going to be likely breaking record temperatures. We're going to have a high of just two. It's going to feel like negative eight, so definitely stay inside if you can. If you're outside for class, bundle up. Very, very important. Thursday night, mostly clear, a few clouds. Temperatures are going to be about average, 
I mean, sorry, not average, but a little bit better, negative 10. Now, as we move on to my five-day forecast, here's that record-breaking cold tomorrow. And finally, that cold, I mean, that warm air was like, hey, cold, get out of here. We want a chance. And when that happens, when those two air masses collide, we get snow. So we're going to have that Friday, Saturday, Sunday possibility of some snow as we get those warmer temperatures. And on to Monday, we will possibly a high of 14. And that's it. Let's send it back to the desk. Governor Rauner is talking about how to make the state budget work. And Illinois professors are forming a union. These are today's state lines. University of Illinois Springfield faculty members have formed a union. The union says the effort will bring more stability, which means higher retention rates and more experience in the classroom. Governor Bruce Rauner wants to hire 407 correction officers at the state prison. This plan is expected to save the department roughly $10 million next year in overtime costs, but still improve safety. Rauner wants to add more than $65 million to improve inmate mental health care. A man who recanted a confession that helped free a death row inmate has filed a $40 million lawsuit against Northwestern University, and a professor he says conspired to frame him for a double sling in 1982. Alistair Simon spent nearly 15 years in prison. NBA legend Magic Johnson is helping Chicago summer youth jobs and violence prevention program by giving them $10 million. The money is expected to help fund 5,000 jobs, tripling the size of the program over the next two years. And those are today's state line. Kurdish forces repel a major ISIS assault. And a funeral for the victim of a terrorist attack in Denmark. Here's what's happening in today's World Watch. Kurdish fighters are fending off a major ISIS attack near Erbil in Iraq. The terrorist assault came from a multitude of directions. Coalition aircraft have been unable to fire on ISIS members because of a close fighting. The United States is part of a group of 60 nations providing air power against ISIS. Mourners carried the casket of a security guard during a funeral service today in Denmark. He was killed outside a synagogue in Copenhagen. The Danish gunman behind that killing and another may have acted drunk to avoid suspicion. Surveillance video shows him staggering toward the synagogue. The gunman had pledged alliance, allegiance to ISIS before the weekend attack. More than 11 million people have signed up for Obamacare coverage this year ahead of Sunday's deadline. But as many as 6 million Americans who didn't have health insurance in 2014 may have to pay a penalty come tax time. Even so, Obamacare enrollment will li likely exceed its goal this year of just over 9 million people. Ashton Carter has been confirmed as a new defense secretary. Vice President Joe Biden conducted a swearing in. Carter takes over for former Secretary Chuck Hagel, who announced his resignation late last year. Carter has served as one of Hagel's deputies. And that's today's World Watch. It's a final from Ohio as the NIU women's basketball team took on conference rival Toledo. Hi everyone, I'm Brett Sudella for NTC Sports. The Huskies fell to the Rockets by a final of 73-57 to in a rare weekday morning matchup. NIU couldn't catch up after falling behind early, ending the first half down 14 points. The Huskies are in fifth place in the MAC West, fighting for a first round home game in the MAC tournament. Moving over to men's NCAA basketball, Getting closer and closer to March Madness, all eyes are on the Kentucky Wildcats as they hold the last undefeated record in the country. John Calipari's squad is looking to break the record for the, earth, for the best start in uh, program history. Here we have uh, Tyler Ulis sorry, feeding Devin Booker for a three ball here in the second half. Ulis again is going to uh, run the break here, feed Willie Cauley-Stein behind the defense for a two-handed flush. There it is. The defense will pick up for the Wildcats here as Andrew Harrison gets the rip and the one-handed breakaway dunk. Later in the half, Carl Anthony Towns will get this re rebound here coming up on this free throw, out fighting the Tennessee player and hitting the layup and the foul. Kentucky improves to a 26-0 record, best start in school history. On to last year's remaining unbeaten, now 13th ranked Wichita State, Fred Van Vliet hits this three from the, po from the post pass against SIU. They're, they're playing the Salukis here. Backdoor cut by Shaquille 
Shaquille Morris, and then he gets a two-handed jam. Van Vliet this time turns the ball over, but Anthony Bean goes on the break. When he goes up, he forgets the ball needs to go over the rim for the dunk, and he kind of gets rim stuff there. The Shockers start to pull away in the second half as Ron Baker drives the lane and feeds Morris for a layup and the foul. Morris on the defensive end later in the second half as he gets his block from behind, leading to a break where Tequil Cotton will get the ball back to, to Morris here. He hits the jumper from the elbow. Shockers would win over the Salukis, big, 84-62. More NIU basketball coming up. Tonight, the men are on the road in Mount Pleasant to take on the Central Michigan Chippewas. Saturday, both men's and women's teams will play back-to-back -back at the Convocation Center, starting with the women hosting Ball State at 5 p.m. Then the men will welcome Eastern Michigan, scheduled for a 7, but will most likely start about 30 minutes after the conclusion of the women's game. We move to the pitch for our play of the day, where Paris St. Germain and Chelsea faced off in the first leg of the UEFA Champions League round of 16. John Terry crosses the ball in the box, gets a nice flick on from Gary Cahill, and then Bronislav Ivanovic with a nice header to finish that up. That's our play of the day, and that's it for me here with sports. Dan Kenny will have the weekend updates for you on Monday. I'm one on Monkey Guy. The chance of being involved in a robbery is 1 in 757. The chances of being struck by lightning. <laughs> One in 750,000. Please fasten your seatbelts for unexpected turbulence. The chances of being a victim in an airline crash? One in 29 million. Hey, could I get some peanuts? The chances of being involved in a car crash are far greater than lightning strikes and plane crashes. And if you are texting while driving, your risk of crash increases 23 times. Now, I may be an unlucky guy, but I don't have to be part of that statistic, and neither do you. Drive responsibly. Despite the cold weather, cold and windy weather this week, one Iowa community celebrated a tradition that involved, guess what, pancakes. The Great Pancake Race raised money for a local food pantry took place in Cherokee, Iowa. Racers flipped flapjacks as they took off on the run, then flipped them again at the finish line. Event organizers say it's something that developed way back in England in the 1400s. Maybe it's just the way they looked in the video, but those pancakes looked as hard as rocks. <laughs> All for a good cause, though. NTC News Tonight is produced and directed by students here at Northern Illinois University. We want to thank you for being with us. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Goodbye, everyone.